This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Brett's Blend, the Sajin, the S&P Bud, and the Ope. I'm you sorry. can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Com. Did you combine you the Cajun and the Sonoran code. heat? What's that? Did you did you combine the Cajun and the Sonoran heat and call it the Sajin? Hey, let's do that. <laughs> combine those two great to make a Sajin. Yes. Be sure to use that sloop, that promo code Sloopcast10. That's Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Be sure to also check out the social media sites of Facebook and Twitter of the Mad Canadian to see where he and his food truck are heading to next Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast order veteran owned company based out of Toledo, Perrysburg, technically. Toledo, Ohio. Uh, All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, they're all hand roasted. They're all roasted to order. They're all roasted in small batches. Um, you can get free shipping over $50. You can get K cups in some of the more popular flavors. Uh, there are subscribe and save services. It's a company based on integrity, first and foremost. That's what you're getting with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. You can find all of that and so much more at the Iron Bean, excuse me, not the, forget the the, at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube and Discord? Hope everyone's having a good weekend or Monday, depending on when you're listening to this. We are recording this before the Super Bowl, so um, we're not going to talk about the Super Bowl at all during the podcast. So let's let's give a, a brief Super Bowl thing for just the YouTube and Discord people. I don't care. That, <laughs> well, that I thought you're that's I thought that, you're going to go. I thought you're going to go. Oh man, wasn't that a great game? Man, I never thought he would have went off in that game. No, we'll we'll do that for the actual show. <laughs> we'll pretend for the actual for the audio listeners. We'll pretend like we knew what happened, but we're 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 going to be honest to our YouTube and Discord people. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get the ball rolling here. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you today? I'm doing okay. You and I did. Because uh, sometimes I go back and I watch the podcast just because I have to go through and uh, do like the little highlights. And by the way, everyone check out our highlights that we put out th- during the course of the week. Um, I'm always like looking up here or looking down here and it's bugging the crap out of me. So I got I have a little mirror that I mounted right above the camera and I'm going to try my best to look in that mirror to make it look like I'm looking at the camera so that I at least have something to look at. Just like as a reminder, it's like, oh, look, there's me. I better look into my own eyes and talk. So it at least looks like I'm looking at the camera instead of always looking off at some other monitor somewhere. That's it. That's that's all of it. All right. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Hey, we, we had um, got some news this week here. We're not quite deep into the... Um, to the wasteland yet uh we got we got some news here um we'll talk about some some basketball here uh so the football schedule uh came out so we'll kind of take a look at that uh, and mainly just gonna kind of do just some talk about the schedule as a whole and just some superlatives yes so let's just get started let's not mess around we actually have a we have a lot to get to all right all right first off um Huge over win. last week buckeyes Defeats Iowa on the road, eighty nine to eighty five. This I, this team, man, this team, uh, this is what we've been waiting for. This is, you know, I think at the end of last year we were sort of not. We weren't. I don't think anyone reasonable was calling for Holtman's job. That's that's not a thing anyone was doing. But I think 
at the end of last year, the honeymoon was at least over and we were at least saying, okay, but when? Okay, but when? And Kyle is, is now? Is when now? Is now, is now when? When Man. will now be then? Man, like, <laughs> I, I like this team. Like, I really like what they've done. I mean, winning seven of their last eight games here. I mean, my, my biggest worry, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downey here, but my biggest worry with this team, and we've seen it like uh, against Iowa. I mean, they ended up winning um, on the road with Iowa, but that loss to Purdue there, what are they missing? They're missing that big man, yep. that presence right, right in the paint there. They just don't have that this year. And they've been hit or miss with the threes. I mean, they playing really well lately. Like I said, they've won seven of their last eight games here. How many of those? One, two, three, four of those seven wins coming coming in top 15 uh, ranked teams at the time. It, it's a really good team. I'm, yeah. I'm just really, I'm just really worried when they get matched up to like a team like Purdue, where they just have, they just have five, seven footers on their team and just being able to out bully Ohio state in the paint. Well, I mean, it's not like Iowa doesn't have some big dudes in the paint. I mean, yeah. Garza. Yeah. I, I, if they, if what what it comes down to with Ohio State, in my opinion, and I'm, I don't know basketball nearly as well as I know football, and I'm not going to pretend to. If they aren't making their outside shots, they're going to get bullied down low. They have to be making those outside shots to force the zone to play a little bit out more, a little bit closer to the arc. And if they're doing that, that can loosen things up on the inside for Liddell and some of their other big men who aren't as big as you would want out of like a true center. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a bunch of really good forwards. They don't have they don't have a true center. No, Uh, I mean, but, but my point is, is that as long as they're making those outside shots that can open stuff up in the paint. Uh, But when you get to tournament time. There, there's no room for error. No, I mean they shot. They shot almost half of their shots from behind the three, and made them. almost half of them. Almost half, yeah. Which is good. Which is good. <laughs> it's, that's amazing. <laughs> um, forty-seven or no, forty-seven was their overall percentage. Uh, forty-three, almost forty-four percent from the arc is amazing. Yes. Let's let's not let's not downplay that. Well, no, this is a great victory. This is probably their, their staple victory for the yeah. year right now on yes, the road yeah. against a top 10 opponent here. Yeah. Possibly when this come, when the rankings come up for this week, top five for Ohio state. I'm if you're going to force me to guess and Kyle force me to guess. Jared. Guess five. Okay. I'm going to guess fifth. I'm going to guess exactly fifth. That's that's my assumption based off of who else lost and their win over Iowa. And that's my I assume five uh, would, would be my assumption. Uh, Kyle, can can Ohio State be a number one seed Ooh, at this point? It's Paul, I'm not saying I'm not asking you to say they will be. Can they be? Mm, it's They can. They could be. Yes. yes. Well, I mean, real. I mean, if they win the rest of their games, they'll be a number one seed. But I'm just saying, like, realistically, is it is it a realistic expectation from here? Well, well, let's well, let's let's look at let's look at this here. So Ohio State beats a top ten opponent. The teams ahead of them, Texas lost yes. to a ranked opponent, uh, and then ahead of them is one loss: Houston, Michigan, and Villanova. And then your top two is undefeated Baylor and Gonzaga. So. Depending on when Michigan comes back, yeah, I mean they're still their their program is still on halt right now, yeah. And then you got to find your way to be able to pass Houston and Villanova at this point here. Hey, that's that's tough. They're right there at that as as um, Ohio State has been familiar with in football a couple of years. They're right on that cusp of that top yeah. four right there. So. 
it's tough. It would be really tough. But like you said, I think if they went out and as much as wow. I would love them to see them went out, I don't That's, see it happening. But yeah. if they went out, yes, they would be a top seed. Well, but there's also the, you know, there's the regular season, but then there's also the Big Ten tournament. You mm-hmm. win that Big Ten tournament. It means a, number, a, a, a number one seed, I think, is pl- totally plausible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was Kyle. That was uh, almost 10 minutes of solid basketball talk. Wow. That's pretty good well, for us. So next game's here for Ohio State. Yes. Let's, let's, let's get to an even 10. Let's get to an even 10. All right. Monday night. So as, as this be, is really being released, Jared, on the road to Maryland. And then this Saturday, taking on the Hoosiers at noon on Saturday. Got to get that. Got to get that Hoosier win. Yes. Got to get that Hoosier win. I mean, didn't they, they just got a big win just recently, didn't they? I believe so. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's Indiana and we're in Big Ten basketball. I mean, I mean, who isn't good in I mean, I don't want to say who isn't good. There are teams that aren't good at, at basketball right now, but. Yeah, that's right. They 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 ju- they themselves beat Iowa just recently, too. There you go. But I'm just it. I it's there aren't there. If you beat a Big Ten team more likely than not, it's going to be a pretty big win. Yeah, that because that's just where the Big Ten is at right now with basketball. Yep. All right, Kyle, uh, let's talk a bit about the Ohio State football schedule. Yes. All right. All yep. right I want to say this right off the top, right off the top with the Big Ten football schedule. I don't even want to entertain the idea that these that this schedule might change or for like COVID reasons. I I don't even want to entertain the idea that. We're going to have to cancel anything that we're going to have to. I, I don't want to entertain any of those ideas this episode. So I already said the COVID word. That's twice now. And I don't want to say it again. All right. We're just accepting the schedule as is. All right. So right now here, there are September 2nd would be the first game here, Jared, on the road to Minnesota, which I'd rather if you have to go on the road to Minnesota, I'd rather be in September than November. The beginning of September, no less. It might actually be warm. (laughs) I mean, by Minnesota standards, it might be warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on the road to Minnesota, that's really interesting. You don't really see Ohio State going on the road that often for their first game. And September 2nd, uh, I, I just now thought of this. What day is that? Do we know? Oh, boy. That's was that, actually a good was that question. A, I'm scrolling through here. Uh, <laughs> September that's something 2nd. we oh, should have known already, right? Oh, boy, Jared. Thursday. This is, this is your opening game here. Uh, yeah, I just all of a sudden it didn't strike me yeah. until just now. Same uh, here. Yep. That this is, this is there's a, a lot game. of days in between September 2nd and September, uh, the 11th of September. I'm going to say it that way. And the 11th of September with Oregon. Now, that being said, if you got to play Oregon in week two, this is kind of ideal because not only are you getting you, you're not starting. You don't want to start the season with Oregon. You want to you want to get another game in, especially your first time starting quarterback, whoever that might be. Yes. So you get a, so you get a game in against uh, Minnesota, who is not a pushover as a quality opponent. It's a quality opponent. It's a, it's a game you should win. Don't get me wrong. It's a game you should win, but it's also not Tulsa. who We'll talk Mm -hmm. about in a second. It's it's on the road at night. So it's going to be a, well, well, you, the, can, you can you can disagree with me, but it'll be a hostile environment. It's a night game. We are. I already said we're not going to talk about the that c word any well, about COVID anymore. Um, <laughs> th- I didn't mean to do that um, about that anymore. But uh, I, I don't know how host- hostile a crowd it's going to be. In all honesty, um, we really don't know. I, I don't know if we're going to have packed stadiums by the fall or not. Um, but. Right now, we're just worried about playing the games, and we'll, we'll play yeah. the games. We'll play the games. So, the second game here, home to Oregon. Now, you get here's a few extra question. days to prepare. You mm-hmm. get warmed up. I like this. So here's a question. I know it says home to Oregon. Is it is it official that it is in Columbus? I know there's been talks about it being a neutral site, but as far as I keep hearing it, 
It is in Columbus, right? Wow. Uh, from Stuart underscore E4 US vet in our Ask Sloopcast, Ask Sloopcast mailbag, uh, will Oregon be moved to a neutral site? Um, I've, in our Discord, we've had this conversation. I've been fully expecting this game to, for, for something to happen. Now, to me, this is the schedule, right? Ohio State released the schedule. This is the schedule. I had been fully expecting some sort of movement in regards to Oregon. Now, maybe Ohio State is just going to have a big payout to, because you do these home and homes with these big opponents. And essentially, you know, one team will pay the other team and then the next year, just because it helps balance budgets and stuff. But Oregon gets their big payday. And then that was supposed to happen in 2020. It didn't. And then in 2021, Ohio State gets their big payday. Um, so I think there was a lot of theory going around, myself included, that this might get neutral sided so that both teams get a big payday. Uh, I, I don't know if the uh, if the release of this football schedule is the official nail in that coffin or not. Um, but it kind of feels like it. I feel like if they were going to move the game, maybe it would have happened by now, especially like I said, here's the official schedule. And it just says Oregon's coming to Ohio State. They're coming to Columbus. All right. We'll just we'll just assume that that's what it is. It is in Columbus right now until we hear otherwise. Yeah. Uh, So that's that's the assumption. Rest of September, Tulsa and Akron. You get you get you get a couple of weeks to to re- kind of recuperate and learn was from the first W-E-E-K two games there. Was that W-E-E-K or W-E-A-K? What is that? Nothing. Jokes. Okay. Spelling jokes. Jokes about spelling. All right. In October here, Jared, here's where it gets interesting. Middle middle of the season here. In October, on the road to Rutgers, home to Maryland. You get a bye week after Maryland. On over to Who's Your Land. Yep. And then finish up October hosting Penn State. So one thing I was uh, worried about was Ohio State's been on a pretty good run with the schedule where they typically will have to go to Penn State or to Michigan. Uh, so you kind those two games kind of flip flop back and forth. Mm hmm. So you've never had to go on the road to both of those opponents in the same year, which is really nice. And I was worried with the fact that the Penn State game happened and the Michigan game didn't happen, that that might get jeopardized. And that's that's not the case. Uh, They are hosting Penn State and going to the big house still. So that's beneficial or is it? Do we actually even care anymore? Are the states of these programs to the point where we wouldn't actually care having to go on the road twice? At this point, no. Yeah, that's sad. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned, like it's interesting. You got Indiana, who was pretty good last year and really good in terms of Indiana standards. Yeah. And Maryland is an interesting team. They showed that they could be really good, but then they also show that they aren't really good as well last year i kind of wish retrospectively that ohio state had played maryland this season last season yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i just i think they would have lit ohio state secondary up and i think ohio state could have maybe learned a few things from that and maybe it would have helped (laughs) develop the team a little bit more that being said ohio state also could have lost i i like where maryland is heading as a program yes yep All right, so, yep, home to Penn State on October 30th, and then November here, a little bit easier here compared to October in my my eyes here. On the road to Nebraska, home to Purdue, Sparty, and then on the road to Michigan. Nebraska is interesting to keep an eye on right now. I don't know where they're headed as a program. Scott Frost on the hot seat right now? Yeah, no, if this, this could be his last season. That's it's it's really just that simple. We've seen players sort of leaving that program, not sort of we've seen players leave that program. uh, So I I don't know. It's 
it's something to keep an eye on. I, I have no idea what that Nebraska team is going to look like come November. It'll be interesting to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's definitely the one I'm really curious on as well. Um, when was the last? So the last time they played, yep, it was in 2019 where Ohio State just steamrolled. Uh, yeah, that was that was Ryan Day's first year there. Ryan Day heading on over to Lincoln, Nebraska, and just steamrolls uh, Nebraska, twenty-eight to seven. Man, they're they've been on a roll playing playing Nebraska. I thought I thought it wasn't supposed to be a um, um, since they're on the west side on the west division. Yeah, they, they've been playing last year. Nebraska, last- they played. 2020, 19, 18, 17, and 16. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. I just kind of feel like last year doesn't count just because the schedule just was what it was. Of course, but they were on the schedule before it got reshuffled. Mm-hmm. So is that a thing? Do we, this, this is, this is Ohio fifth, State just playing the rest year in a row? Year? I don't know. It, it's just interesting. I, I just saw that. I'm like, oh, when's the last time they played? A, they went on the road in Nebraska. I'm like, oh, yeah, it was just a few years ago. And, and then I started looking more. I'm like, oh, they've played them. This will be the fifth year in a row. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so Ohio State's cross opponents here at Nebraska, um, at home. Minnesota. And, and Purdue comes home. Home to Purdue. Those are your three crossovers, which as far as that goes... I'd say is, I mean, you don't play Northwestern, who is the team who's been I, at <laughs> them. And is it fair to say that them and Wisconsin have been the two best teams in the West in recent years? Consistent. Can, okay. That's, that's fair. I think the, probably the most consistent team, uh, them and uh, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. um, Iowa, just sometimes I was good and sometimes not. That's that's just what they deal with from a talent perspective. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's and then you and then you got Illinois. Yeah, well, then there's Illinois. Point is, is that you avoid playing Northwestern, Wisconsin, and Iowa, and any of them on the road at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So looking, looking, if you scroll down a little bit, Jared, there's, um, there's the football schedule for every mm-hmm. team here. Now, I know I put this in late, you so did. I don't know if you've had time to look at. Not, not, not digest, not digest it now. Okay. So let's just kind of look at the, on the same, ooh, Jared made that bigger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, looking at teams on the the big Northeast division here. So looking at Michigan here, Michigan has um, out of conference opponent home to Washington. It's a quality opponent there. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see the cross opponents. So they're on the road to Wisconsin and then Nebraska back to back weeks. And then they are home to Northwestern. That's, that's a pretty good chat. That's a pretty big challenge for Michigan. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Penn State, home to, well, I don't know if this is home or not, but they get to play Auburn this year. Uh, the uh, white, their first white is one, Penn State is on the road to Wisconsin. So look at that. Wisconsin playing both Penn State and Michigan home this year. But once again, have we decided if that actually means anything anymore or not? Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Penn State's on the road to Iowa and home to Illinois. I think Ohio State probably got the easier of the <laughs> of the of the three there with Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan when I'm looking at that compared to on the road and who they're playing to. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to again, your cross divisional games, it's not as easy as it could have been because mm-hmm. you didn't get Illinois, who's yeah. just the bottom feeder of the Western division. But at the Maybe. same time, you avoided who I think are and I haven't like deep dove into who all's returning in all of these West programs. Um, but it historic, just recent history would suggest that your three best teams are Iowa, Northwestern and Wisconsin, and you avoid all three of those. 
So you might not get Illinois, but like I said, you avoid who are traditionally, recent traditionally, the three best teams in the West. Mm -hmm. Now, Jared, something we didn't even mention here. So there is a game in week zero. And this is really interesting because of everything going on in the world right now, but Illinois and Nebraska. Yeah. Heading on over to Dublin, Ireland. Yes. Uh, no. we are, we're not, is that, we, is that smart? We already said we weren't going to talk about it. Is that smart? We already said we weren't going to talk about it. We weren't entertaining the idea of things not happening. I know. I'm just saying, okay. Even though we're going to assume that it, it's going to happen, but is it smart for the Big Ten to schedule this to go to Ireland? Um. Yeah, I, 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 I get what you're asking, and I don't want to get into it. <laughs> All right, Kyle, I asked our uh, our Sloop Cats over in the Discord channel to toss us some schedule-based questions. The schedule came out, and I said, okay, everyone, take a look at the schedule, send us some questions. So I picked mm -hmm. out some of the best ones here. Uh, where would you like to start? All right, let's start with Buckeye Zach here. Uh, he starts us off here with, with a traditional bye week occurring after Maryland and before the road game against Indiana, what does this mean? What does this mean for, for Indiana? Does having a bye week prior show that this game will have so much more meaning in the Iowa, or excuse me, that Indiana is the quote team to beat in the East for next season? And do they, re they do return a lot and are well coached. They do return a lot. They are well coached. I, I agree with all of that. I don't think Ohio State having the bye right before the game indicates that they're the team to beat. Um, because I don't think the Big Ten schedule makers are trying to set it up that way. Uh, it's worth noting that Indiana does not have a bye week right before the Ohio State game. So that's a, it's an advantage for Ohio State. Ohio State will have a bye before Indiana. Indiana will be playing Michigan State the week before Ohio State. So that's that all is what it is. Uh, I mean, Mich I don't have high expectations for who Michigan State will be this mm -hmm. year. So I, oh. I, I don't know. It, in, that might be a bit of a trap game for Indiana. A bye week, Michigan State, Ohio State. Like, do they spend how much of that bye week do they spend preparing for Ohio State instead of Michigan State? And does Michigan State make them pay for it if they spend more time than not focusing on Ohio State? So that Michigan State game is a game. If I'm an Indiana fan, I'd be watching as a bit of a trap game. Um, well, speaking of bye weeks here, Wisconsin's we bye, Wisconsin's bye week is week three. That's. Early. But then look who they play after week three. Notre Dame. They're playing Notre Dame in Soldier Field. That's fun. Um, it's an early bye week. That's that's yeah. not great for Wisconsin. Yeah, because because you look at like Indiana and Illinois because they have a, they're playing week zero. They have an extra bye week put in their schedule. But yeah. Wisconsin here, I think they got the short end of the stick here. They have their first bye week week three, and then it's a long road for them well the it's actually the their fault because and this the it's very small and it's hard for me to see it looks like they are playing an out-of-conference game in mid-october that is looks that like an armed forces team yeah is that is that the army the logo is that really small like, in my notes can yeah i'm going to make this a little bit bigger that looks like army that okay. sure does yeah. look like army but, there. yeah so they have so i don't think that's was i think that's wisconsin's own fault is what that is. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. Uh, but that being said, let's let's at least answer part of Buckeye Zach's question. Does that make Indiana the team to beat? I think from what we saw last year, I think so. Okay. I mean, they, they were turning a lot of players and a lot of them really good players who played an important role on the team there. I I really think so. I think I think Indiana is going to be really pushing to get to that number two spot in the division. I I just of ahead of Michigan, ahead of Penn State, ahead of Maryland this year. Yeah, um, I, I just don't know what to make of Penn State right now. Or I mean, Michigan. look at Penn State. Or, Michi or Michigan. I know what to make of Michigan. I have very low expectations for Michigan. <laughs> I don't know what to make of Penn State. I mean, look, look, look at their first three games. 
they open they open with Wisconsin. I don't I, based it's, on what we saw last year, they lose that game. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then they play and then they play Ball State and then Auburn. Then they play Auburn. Boy, we're going to learn a lot from Penn State early on, which is um, uh, Buckeye Zach's second question. Will Penn State return to the form next season and contend with the Buckeyes for the East Division title? Uh, the answer is somewhere in between. Do they? <laughs> Michigan Bucknut says nope. Uh, I, I agree. I agree with Michigan it's, Bucknut. Well, it's somewhere in between. I think they're going to. They're not going to return all the way to form, but I don't think they're going to be the train wreck that they were last year uh, either. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard to get worse than what they <laughs> did fair. last year. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right. Another one from Buckeye Zach. Which games do you see as potential nightcaps and which will be played at noon? Kyle, let's Ooh. lightning round this. All right. Let's see. Minnesota is, is a night game. That's a night game. That will be a night That's game. That's a night Oregon, game. night game. Is Tulsa, it? Akron, whoa. noon games. Whoa, whoa. That's not what Fox does. Fox wants their big games at noon. Now it's Oregon. They're coming. So that pro- it's like 9 a.m. for them. So you know what? No, I take that back. You're right. Oregon's probably a night game. It's a night game. Tulsa, Akron. It's not, it's not fair to ask Oregon to kick off for what their body clock says is 9 a.m. Yep. Tulsa, Akron, noon games. All right. I October. wouldn't be surprised to see those be 3.30s, by the way. October. Oof. I think you could throw any of these up here. I think you, maybe the Indiana game could be a depend depending on how well Indiana does. That could be like a Herb Street special, maybe. I, I no see, but that's the thing. I think if Indiana if Indiana comes in that game undefeated, that's a nooner. That's the big, that's the Big Ten Fox nooner with, with Gus and Gus Joel. Johnson. I think more likely are sort of the next rung games. If you're looking for night games, I think it's more likely that it's like Rutgers. Yes. Okay. I, I think is actually, it has to, if it's a premier game, Fox is going to pick it and Fox is going to put it on at noon. It's those sort of next tier games that ESPN is going to jump on. And even though you're like, why the hell would you put Ohio State Rutgers on at eight o'clock? Well, it's because it's one of, it's one of ESPN's few chances to actually air an mm-hmm. Ohio State game. So they're going to put it in prime time. Because mm-hmm. they're not, they're not going to touch uh, the game. No, it's always going to be on Fox now. It's always going to be on Fox. It's always going to be at noon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn State. I could see this being either. I could see this being if Penn State's game. bad, it, mm-hmm. it, it could very well end up on ESPN. Yeah. If Penn State comes into that game undefeated, mm-hmm. big noon kickoff. It's yep. weird because it's the the logic is the exact opposite of where it was yep. a few years ago. Yep. Uh that Nebraska, Purdue, and Michigan State. I, I think I think you would see like the Michigan State game probably be like a 330 game. <laughs> On the Big Ten network. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Purdue Purdue game. I, I, I see that being like on ESPN somewhere. I, I, I think that's also a possibility. Mm-hmm. All right. And then, I, then yeah. Yeah. Um let's see. Well Will Rutgers, Will Rutgers be a third or fourth place team in the East? Can can Rutgers cl- uh, get into the top three or four? Can they be a third or fourth place team in the East? Can yes. they get? Um, can they? I mean, they could potentially get fourth, but I don't see it. I don't expect a ton from Penn State this year, and I don't expect a ton from Michigan this year. But if we're talking about getting fourth place in the East, they're in the conversation. I think so, so Maryland. Gotta, so they got to they got to beat out three teams. So beating out Sparty, I think they can. They can beat out Sparty. Mm-hmm. Now the, then, the question is going to be: Can they beat out Maryland and as well as a Michigan and or Penn State team? I don't see it. Yeah, I think, I think Rutgers think- is moving in the right direction, but that's just it's too soon. Not there. Yeah. All right, hey Jared. Before we move on, yes. let's. Take a break here and, and um, hear from our sponsors here. Absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, we have the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, hand-roasted, roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company. Uh, I think last week I talked about the Loki, how I wasn't sure if I was going to, uh, you know, it's, it's a medium light. 
I don't know if I really like light roast that much, but it was amazing. It was so good. So uh, I might have to pick up a new bag of that. Uh, some of their other light roast, or excuse me, their medium roast. Um, note Michigan Bucknuts question. I want to answer it after the ad read. Um, some of the other medium roast, uh, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, I've actually just been drinking that one recently. I like it a lot. Uh, the Ride or Die and the Cast Iron might be my two favorites so far. I've not tried all the coffees yet, but those ones are real, real good. Uh, the Ride or Die I, is so good. Um, that one and the Loki might be in my top two right now. Uh, I'm not normally like a dark roast guy. It's not... That's not my go-to, but uh, I have had the Fierce recently, and I have to say, it was amazing. It was so good. I, I, all of these coffees are great. You just kind of have to find the one that, fit right for, that fits right for you. And the cool thing is, is that you can get a sampler bag, a sampler pack that it will have six of these coffees in it in smaller bags, and you can try a bunch of them and find out which one's right for you. They're all good. I, if you're a coffee snob or if you may be looking to sort of up your coffee game, this is this is the place for you. So you can find all of those coffees and more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian's been a been a good friend of ours for well over a year now, and yep. he just has such amazing, amazing seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Um, I usually say this at the end of the episode, but I'll, I'll plug it right here in the middle here. His his um box sets here. He has three box sets for you to choose from to save even a little bit more money. Uh, so the three here that he has is the Just Send It, which he says it is his most versatile seasoning. It's an all, all around collection. You can do just about anything with these four seasonings, which includes the S&P Bud, the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun and the smoked. Uh, the the next one here, he has the sweet heat, which is probably my favorite of the box sets here. He says here, want a little heat? What about some sweet? Why not both? Get two of our hottest paired with our sweetest in this box set. Definitely a great set for chicken wings, and I agree. It includes the four horsemen, the discord, the old fashioned, and the two border. And the last one here, if you just cannot make up your mind on which season to get, look no further than the whole hog. One of each of the seasonings over at the McKinney BBQ. This is the mother of all box sets. A great present for that pit master in your life. Um, that's right. You get one bottle of each seasoning. Never be lost for a flavor again with this complete collection of the McKinney BBQ spices. And on top of that, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% more off of your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. Michigan Bucknut, during the ad read, asks us the question, uh, Rutgers is going to upset someone. Who will it be? Ooh, so looking at Rutgers' schedule here, uh, I can see them upsetting Temple. Um, oh, I... Ooh. That's that's an insult to Rutgers, is it not? <laughs> uh, let's see here. So they oh, they got they got some tough games. They're on the road to Michigan, on the road to Northwestern, on the road to Indiana, on the road to Penn State. That's that's pretty tough for for Rutgers here. Um, maybe the Maryland game that last that last week of the um, big 10 season. I just don't see them that they do have Wisconsin coming over, but I don't see Rutgers beating out Wisconsin. I'm looking, I'm looking at the Wisconsin game. The Indiana game depends. Cause I think Greg Sean is a good coach. He'll have the team coached up. So I think if they upset someone, it'll be towards the end of the season after I, they've I, had some time to develop. So I'm going to keep an eye on maybe on that Penn state game. Yeah, I was going to say either Maryland or the Penn State game. I'm going to keep an eye on the Penn State game. All right. All right, let's see here. We have Stuart underscore E4, US event. What will be the biggest factor to Ohio State going 12-0 and winning the Big Ten championship? 
Uh, just consistency. I mean, that's that's a boring answer, but it's consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they gotta they gotta hit up there. Uh, they gotta really hit off on the right foot early. You're on the road on a Thursday game over to Minnesota, and then you get to play Oregon that following week. There, you, you, you can't really mess up too too much. I'm I'm surprisingly concerned about Maryland, Indiana, Penn State. Now you do get a bye week in there. There's a bye week in between Maryland and Indiana, which helps. But that that run concerns me a little bit, especially going to Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we don't know what crowds are going to be like in October, but um, yeah, going to Indiana that's that's a concern, um, especially like I said, right before Penn State, and you know, not right after Maryland because of the bye week. But uh, I think basically, if you're talking about what the, what's the biggest factor getting your young quarterback ready because yeah. you're also starting out of the gate against a Minnesota team. That's not a pushover and an Oregon team. That's not a pushover. Now those are both games you should win, but you have a brand new starting quarterback. So get, so what's the biggest factor not dropping one in September while you're getting your young quarterback going. That's your biggest factor. All right. Um, let's see. He also asks us here, Jared, which school in the Big Ten would you most want to experience a game at? I'd really like to see Ohio State win a game in the Big House. Yes, that would be that would be as well as well as um, um, over at Penn State, they're one of their whiteouts, too. I don't know if I want to be in that crowd, to be honest. I've heard I've heard horror stories. I've heard horror, horror stories leading up to it. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard horror stories about being, about wearing red in, in, in that stadium. Yeah. All right. Uh, Florida Buckeye asks us, if you had to root for a Power 5 team or Notre Dame team, besides Ohio State, who would it be? Uh, Kyle, who, who's your team? Pick a team. Not Ohio State. Who you got? I can't pick another Big Ten team. Can't do it. No Big Ten team? I can't pick a Big Ten um, team. Can I, I'm not going to do it. What about... There's there's Pitt? <laughs> I don't know. Do you pick a team that has a realist... How about Oklahoma? Um, I, 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 might get, I might get some um, bad feedback here because of the conference they're in, but maybe Georgia. Mm, no, can't. Okay. Can't, okay. can't do Georgia. Okay. Because not only... Not only are they intolerable for a bunch of reasons, but they also just can't win. They haven't won anything in a long time. I feel like I need to pick a team that at least has a shot at winning something eventually, right? Who else other than Alabama, really? <laughs> I mean, a shot. We're talking like a realistic shot. I think USC will be back in a couple years. There's Alabama, of course. There's Clemson, Bearcat- and that's not happening. Bearcats aren't power five. Nor, nor would I root for the Bearcats. Yeah, I, I said a realistic chance, Michigan <laughs> Bucknut, and the Bearcats are not a realistic chance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I uh, do I have to pick one? Yes, that was the question. I, I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, I'll say USC. All right. All right. Let's see here. Um. At the Jared. What? Oh, wait, we, uh, we're not down in there yet. We have to introduce. Oh, yeah. Wait, one last question. Sorry. Missed this one. Uh, Stuart asks us one more question with the big 10, having a lot of new co- coaches. And with this being some of their fir- first four seasons, which team is the best position to make a leap from shitty to average and which team has could leap from average to good. Well, so, Penn State for they were shitty last year. So if you want to say shitty to average, it's Penn State. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, average to good, Maryland. Maryland was the first one that came to my mind. We, we keep we keep saying it. It seems like every year or every other year, Minnesota. I I don't know, man. Nebraska. Are you are you, are you going to row that boat boat again? I think they have an opportunity to. Um, but I don't know. Average to good. I think it's possible. They're going to, fi- we're going to find out week one. 
Yeah, we definitely will. Yes. All right, Kyle. Now let's uh, uh, Penn State <laughs> uh, hot garbage average year last year. Yeah, uh, I agree, Buckeye Zach. Uh, all right, Kyle. We're doing. Super- I asked the Sloop Cats to send us some superlative questions. If you don't know, a superlative is something like the most improved player, uh, the player most likely to this, or the player most or least likely to that. It's it's questions like that. So mm-hmm. I asked uh, asked the Sloop Cats for a bunch of superlative questions. And Kyle, we spent a lot more time on basketball and the schedule than I anticipated. So uh, we're going to have to maybe move through these pretty quickly. All right. All right. Austin Formation has a bunch of questions here. So just like you said, Jared, let's go through these quick. Team most likely to Iowa, Ohio State. And I don't like how you question that. But anyways, <laughs> team to most likely Iowa, Ohio State. Uh, Maryland. I think yeah. that's the game I'm looking at on the schedule. Uh, it's before a bye week. Mm-hmm. I agree. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Ohio State player most likely to go from zero to hero. A corner. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know which one yet. Um, also, you're starting three brand new linebackers. Dallas Gant, I think, is a decent answer to that question. I may st- I may stick with with what you said from zero to hero. I know he he started improving towards the end of last season, but thanks. I see. I can't I can't call him zero though. Mm. But a corner, and then, par- then probably the a linebacker. Corner? Then, Who's then the probably third? a linebacker. But who wins the second corner spot? Who wins the third corner spot? Those guys, I think, have an opportunity to go like from completely unknown to the casual fan to mm-hmm. amazing. Yep. All right. Uh, which player is most likely to wreck a golf cart? Which player most likely? Uh, I, I don't know if Demar. I don't know if we know if Demario McCall is on the team or not. But Demario <laughs> McCall. Um, you know, I'll I'll go with uh, I'll go with a lineman. Let's go with a lineman. Mm. Because it's top heavy, yes. So which one? Who you got? Dwan Jones. Uh, let's go with Petit Frere. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, just because I like saying his name. Uh, that, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, player most likely to eat a steak with their bare hands. Uh, I'll go with Harry Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the thing. That's the last. You never pick the center for something like that. <laughs> never pick the center for something like that. Uh, <laughs> I think it's Dwan Jones again. I think it's Dwan Jones again. All right. Um, which player on the current roster is most likely to have the best NFL career? Uh, I'm going to currently on the roster. It's hard not to say either Alave or Wilson. Yeah. Um, probably, probably definitely. I would, Olave is the first one. You know, I tell you what, I know this is maybe a cop out answer, but one of the wide receivers, like freaking pick one. Uh, let's see here. Coach most likely to leave the staff after this year. Um, I, he, he doesn't say by whose choice. Uh, I, I, so first and foremost, Larry Johnson's up there in age. And I think that Brian Hartline is absolutely a young, hungry coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, maybe he, maybe Ohio State takes care of him and he stays, but that's a guy who I think if he wanted to, could have a head coaching job at a Mac school or an offensive coordinator job at Cincinnati or a school like Cincinnati. Uh, So I, I think that's where I'm, mentally at uh, one of those two guys one of them because he's sort of young and rising quickly and the other one just because he's on the older side okay um which player is most likely to force more than six turnovers um uh zach harrison some on some strip sacks potentially Probably a linebacker would be 
because they but they have more opportunities at both interceptions and fumble forces. Um, I just don't know which linebacker. Mm-hmm. Maybe two o two o. Should he actually come to Ohio State? <laughs> um, a, a name to keep an eye on as he's trying to transfer out of yeah, go, out of Tennessee. I'll go with Friday. Tyler Friday. Tyler, Tyler Friday. Friday. You know what? You could take this other way too. How about Haskell Garrett? Force. No, 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 no. <laughs> we aren't. Force. <laughs> all right. Not, uh, the force is specifically defensive. All right. Uh, I'll go with Friday. No. Which player is most likely to be ejected for targeting? Mm. Um, I'm going to go Proctor because it, al- it always seems to be the safety. Yes. I was going to say Hooker, but so we'll go with one of the safeties there. <laughs> I'm sticking All with Proctor. Right. And uh, last question here. Which Big Big Ten coach is most likely to win Coach of the Year? Who? Um, You're right. Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> most likely to win Coach of the Year this year. Uh, Scott Frost. <clears throat> you know, Michigan Buckner, that that name came to my mind as soon as I said Hoosiers. Franklin, because of... James how Franklin. bad he did last year <laughs> does it count if you were if you clean up your own mess <laughs> i guess maybe it does yeah. oh well michigan bucknut says yes it does count if you clean up mm-hmm. your own mess um, no. michigan bucknut also asks who will be the most impactful freshman most impactful freshman uh hmm and that's that's a that's a that's one to toss me right at the beginning, and I guess we're going true freshman in this case. Uh, I don't think any of the corners are going to be going first year. Uh, hey, can, can, can I say um, <clears throat> uh, JT? <laughs> Which one? J- the one who T- hasn't committed yet. <laughs> JTT. JT Tui Molau. Mm-hmm. Um. No, I, I think it's if it's going to be a defensive lineman, I'd say it's Sawyer. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm actually going to go with Sawyer. I think it will be my answer. OK, hard, hard, hard to go with like Emeka with the the crowd that he's with right now. Yeah, that that the the wide receiver is insanely talented. Hey, it's just you know such what? a crowded room. So gotta, I got to say his name here. Henderson, Trayvon Henderson. He could be he could be most impactful if you look at the season as a whole. If you, uh, you know what? That's the right answer. I, I don't know why my mind spaced on Henderson. Yeah, Henderson's the correct answer. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Brawley asks us here, Jared, who will have the most bought jerseys for the 2021 season? Okay. They changed the jersey rules. He says um, that number one was the best selling last year. And even though it doesn't say Justin Field, they always sell a number one. They always sell a number one. They always sell the year. So there'll be a 22, excuse me, a 21 jersey this year. Um, and then there's another number that they always sell that I, I can't. But the point is, is that in order to avoid lawsuits, they stopped matching the numbers to the popular players. They just always sell a number one jersey. So that, it'll be number one. <laughs> but who's going to be number one? That's a good question. Um, who would be the most detrimental to lose to an injury? Uh, I'll Seven go with Harry banks. Miller. I'd go with Harry Miller. I think th- I think Luke Whipler could come in and do okay. Um, I think it's Seven Banks. You're already light in the cornerback room. I think he's your dedicated number one guy coming back. Last thing you need is more. So I think you'll probably also say the same thing for Proctor. Well, and here, here's a thing too. When we saw him out one game too, Olave. Yeah, the wide receiver room is just so deep, mm-hmm. and you know those true freshmen last year will be second year players this year, and you know better able to come in, and will have more coaching because they'll have a legitimate off season and all of that stuff. So, uh, as great as Olave is, he might be the best player on the team. Yeah, uh, I just there. You have to look at where they aren't deep, and that's in the secondary. Yeah, all right. Least detrimental starter. Uh, you could say a wide receiver again there too. 
uh, yeah, and it's and maybe even running back. You could say running back as you, well. You could easily say running back because I think they're kind of itching to get those young guys on the field anyway. Um, mm-hmm. They're very deep in the running back room. Uh, so yeah, I think um, I hate this. I don't want to, I'll just say a running back. I don't want to, I don't want to name names. All right. All right. Uh, Stuart asks, which non-starter is the biggest fan favorite that isn't named Dewan Jones? Uh, whoever doesn't win quarterback. Most popular guy on the team is the backup quarterback, as they like to say. Mm-hmm. If you were to pick three players to go into a fight. Okay. With Anchorman style. Yeah. It, who would you choose and why? Also, pick pick there in your weapons of choice. Um, let's let's just stick to the player names because we're, we're running over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to go. I think you have to go offensive linemen, right? I may be defensive linemen. I'm not going to turn down Zach Harrison. So uh, I definitely want Thayer Munford on my team. Yes. I want Thayer Munford on my team. Um, I, want, um, I want Haskell Garrett on my team. Yes. I want those older you, guys. I would probably want Ruckert as well. I mean... I, I I want pure size, man. If I'm getting into a f- you know, if I'm getting into a I, scrap, I want pure I'd with, size. I'd go with Ruckert just because you're the tight end. All right, I'm going. I'm going Haskell Garrett. I'm going Thayer Munford, and Tyreek Smith's not a bad choice. Buckeye Zach. Um, give me Petit Fury. Hmm. No, 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 no. Dwan Jones. Dwan Jones is my third guy. All right. I got, I got Munford, Petit Fury. Or excuse me. Let me, let me back up. I got Munford, Ruckert, and I'll, I'll go with Tyreek Smith. Okay. I'll go with Tyreek Smith. Get but some, we both some, pick get, Thayer get, Munford. Get some, get some variety in there. But we get both pick variety. Thayer Munford. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, Nomad asks, which player is the next in line to wear number zero. I think we kind of talked about that already. I'm, I'm not afraid to talk about it again. Um, Haskell Garrett, I think would yes. be my first pick. Um, my second pick may be Chris Olave, although I think he really likes wearing number two. So I, I, th- I think it's, it's just, it, it just aligns for Garrett to get it. I, I think it, so too. Yes. I think so too. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing one of the quarterbacks wear zero. Ooh, how about that? Yeah. Well, it's not going to happen, but that would be fun. All right. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks, which form of Buckeye from the past season will find themselves staying proudly in Columbus, covering the Buckeyes in some capacity? All right, guys. All right. One, pick, pick a guy currently on the team, most likely to host a radio show a la Bobby Carpenter. That's that's how I'm framing this. And I th- Harry Miller. I think Harry Miller from the past, which former Buckeye from the past season. So we're going the past season. So the past season. I don't know. I think Cooper. I could really see Ooh, Cooper. That's a good I answer. Co- I think Cooper is the answer there. I, I'm not going to. You're not wrong. Um, I think that's a great answer. About, I'm going to stick with what, Harry. I'm going to stick with Harry Miller, though. What about Chrisman? Mm. Do people want to hear from the? Well, uh, yes, what's they do. <laughs> what's this? Uh, maybe you know what? Maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, we are running long here, Jared. Let's. Um, we got the last questions here. Just random questions here. Um, we have one from um, a good friend of ours that I put in here. He asks us over under number of picks thrown by Ohio State quarterbacks this season, and it, the number is set at ten and a half interceptions. I mean, I definitely want it to be less than ten and a half, but freshman, redshirt, and otherwise, um, it's theoretically a, a no no it's a longer season this year uh at, at probably 14 games i you would assume 14 games um 10 i think is totally a plausible number mm-hmm. and that's why i'm going to go under yeah i'm just t- 10 and a half's a good number i'm just saying that's that's a at first it felt 
at first it felt high. The more I thought about it, I think it's a good number. Um, I think I'm going to go over. I mean, think about it. If, if Ohio State, it's 14 games. If, you know, it's less than one per game. It's not, it's not ridiculous. I'm going over. All right. I'll go under. Uh, let's see here, Jared. Which question do you want to do next? Uh, Kaboto asks us, um, will the Supreme Court give the NCAA antitrust exemption? Um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to pretend to be. Um, I don't think so, because I think the players would have to have a union to get mm-hmm. antitrust exception. Um, but I'm not a lawyer, so I, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to be. But that's mm-hmm. that's my and, basic and, that's my basic take on it. Yeah. But and he I also could, asked, how would the landscape of college football change with state specific NIL rules? Yeah, the. NIL, the name, image, likeness, um, if they were state specific, I don't know. I I don't even know how to answer that, but how about, how, how about just generally speaking, Kyle, um, if name, image, likeness becomes a thing, how does that affect college football? Because my first thought is one, just the rich get richer. It just it creates a further divide from your top tier programs to everybody else. Mm-hmm. But does it make Oregon a powerhouse? Because they'll just give Nike contracts to freaking whoever. And I don't know if Under Armour. I mean, still I mean has with that the rock, money that I mean, Under Armour once log, had, with that know. with that logic, Maryland should be also. Well, I was actually I was just saying I Under Armour is not in the place that they were a few years ago, financially speaking. Um, But I also don't know what I'm talking about as far as Under Armour. Man, yeah, I I really don't know how to answer that question, unfortunately. That's that's so tough. Yeah. Sorry. But Uh, honestly, no matter, I just think the rich get richer. Yeah. All right. uh, One last question from uh, Kabuto. When a developing player doesn't see the field, is it okay to say they were just blocked by an older player? Or is that or is that BS and they just aren't good enough to play? Uh, it just it just depends. I mean, look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow just didn't get on the field. He was obviously great. Um, mm-hmm. And then you look at J.K. Dobbins, true freshman, come in and just worked his way out of the field. Mm-hmm. But but also look at all the amazing wide receivers that are going to be stuck behind Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. I I just, it's, there's, there's no, there's no rule there. Sometimes it's BS. Sometimes it's not. Um, So I wouldn't say it's BS. I just, I wouldn't say it's BS. Sometimes it's true. Look, look at, tell you what, look at Justin Fields in Georgia. Look at Justin Fields, Georgia. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Buckeye Zach asks us a couple of questions here, Jared. It's Brett. Is Brett? Bielema. I can never pronounce his last name, Jared. It wouldn't be the Sloopcast if you could. Brett Bielema. <laughs> Bielema. Thank you. Yep. Still, uh, still is, not there. Is Brett the savior Illinois needs to become relevant again, or will Illinois continue to be the whipping boy of the West? My question. I'm going to answer this question with a question. Mm-hmm. Was Illinois ever relevant? Not since like the early 2000s. I, they had a brief they moment. They were relevant, but they weren't. They were relevant, but that was it. Relevant within the Big Ten. They weren't national. You become they, relevant again. They never were. And yeah, I, I, really thought, I really thought I really thought Levy Smith was going to win more games. I, I thought I, I did too. I I I thought Lovey Smith was going to fix that team, and I think he just re, I think he just treated it as a retirement exactly, job. Exactly what Michigan Bucknut when Juice played for them. Yeah, they they were slightly elevated because Juice was so good, and they were relevant during that time. But and that by, was it. <laughs> but but again, that's relevant. They weren't relevant. They were relevant by Illinois standards. 
that's that, that's how I see it. All right, Jared. One last question for you: Who is the champion of the Premier League this year? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know? I don't. I don't follow the Premier League that closely. I don't know. You don't? No. no. I thought about it. <laughs> Austin. Austin says West Ham United. Hey, Austin joined us just in time for a Premier League question. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I, I I agree. I think I think it's Man City. Man, they they've been on a roll. They've they looked good on Sunday. I watched I watched that sec. I watched half of the game that they played against Liverpool. They yeah. I, I'm not I'm not a Man City fan either, Buckeye Zach. But I mean, you got to give them credit. I mean, they what is it? They've won like 14 in a row, something like that. And like like all games that they've played in the last 14 games. I mean, you got to give them credit there. Got to give him credit. I agree. But you know what? I'm going to give hats off to Chelsea, though. Yeah. Chelsea is, um, they Good decide honor. not to play um, Pulsic today, uh, a, um, a U.S. forward. They decide not to okay. play him today mm-hmm. because the, everybody's just looking like, hmm, let's see, not playing on a Super Bowl Sunday, maybe just giving him the break there so he can watch the Super Bowl. I doubt it. <laughs> well, that that's that's the thing. That's the is that the that's, meme? That's what's going on in in social media land. Of so that that playing. that's the meme. Yes. Okay. Yes. You know what? I agree. Yes. Hats off to you, Chelsea. <laughs> I, I don't All know right. what's going on, guys. I I don't know what's going on right now. I've lost control of my show. All right, that is, this is Kyle all the now. questions, Jared. All the questions, and in normal fashion, we are over on time. What? Never. All right, uh, guys, go to thesloopcast.com, and there's a bunch of links. T-shirt links, and podcast links, and YouTube links, and lots and lots of links. It's a, it's just a place where links are. That's that's all thesloopcast.com is. But go there and find links, including uh, come come hang out in our Discord. If you're tired of social media, if social media has become stupid for you, as stupid as it's become for me, if you see me tweeting a lot less, it's because I'm hanging out in the Discord instead, and you should too. So, so come join our Discord. That's it. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No. <laughs> should we should we pretend like we saw the Super Bowl? Uh yes, that was such a great game. And oh my God, Tom Brady. Yes, what it was Tom Brady such... did there. Yeah, that that thing with Tom Brady, how he was um, good or terrible. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what? A, and can you believe he just like retired at halftime? He just retired at halftime. They were tied. Now I'm getting super specific. Then, then the police showed up. Well, shut the down the never... Super Bowl because they were being too loud. They were over occupancy limit. Oh, that's what's already going on now, Jared. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh that, that's so that was so that that terrible comedy skit we just did was um was 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 Kyle's corner. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, I don't have a band lined up. Hey, uh hey, anyone in the chat name name a name 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 a band. <laughs> that I've played in recent years or months or weeks that you really liked. Come on, someone in the, someone, the black keys, uh, that, 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 that's going to get me copyright issues. Black keys are too pop. Ah, fuck it. We'll do it. We'll play another black keys song. Come get me. (laughs) Come get me lawyers. We'll start the show and end the show at the black keys. I don't give a fuck. All right, yeah, we'll do a Black Key song. Screw it. We'll do Lonely Boy. How about that? We're going to, should we, or maybe 10 a.m. Automatic? Michigan Bucknut, if you're going to give me the band, you might as well pick the song, too. Waiting, waiting. Oh, Go West. Okay. Um, oh, by Low Pan. We could do Go West. No, no, just pick a Black Key song. Pick a Black Key song, Michigan Bucknut. Michigan Bucknut's picking the ending music because he was in the chat for the entire episode. That's what we're doing right now. Just pick a Black Key song. Popular, not popular, go an album cut, do their biggest hit. I don't care. Pick a Black Key song. Michigan Bucknut, we're doing it live. 
We're doing it live with Michigan Bucknut because he was in the chat for the entire episode, and I appreciate it. No pressure. No, no pressure. pressure we're, but we're just hurry. wasting seconds here, but yeah. Pick whatever song you want, but do it quickly. <laughs> when he stopped typing. Oh, now he's typing. I don't even care if you spell it right. If that's your issue, if you're Oh, black submarine. Okay, yeah, we're doing sub yep. Little black submarines. That's 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 the one we're doing right now. We're doing little black submarines by the black keys. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the black keys. I miss I miss wearing a beanie. I, I rarely wear beanies. We're what this is the second episode in a row we've both worn one. Mm -hmm. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? Sorry to put you on the spot, Michigan Bucknut, but I thought it was fun. I hope you had fun too. I've been playing with my microphone a lot this episode. I normally do, but I feel like I was even extra. More so today. Too much pressure couldn't type. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, hey, Michigan Bucknut, as long as it was funny, that's all that matters, right? Mm -hmm. And as long as you were in on the joke, I, you know, I always want to make sure you're in on the joke and not, you know. Uh, we have fun. We have fun here. That's all that matters. All right, Kyle, let's go ahead and end the episode. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and end the episode. Uh, I'll, I'll start it. All right. Once again, I'd like to thank the Black Keys for ending today's episode and hopefully for not suing us. Uh, <laughs> and once again, would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, marine-owned, world-class, premium, small-batch, roast-to-order coffee company. They're based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is their core value. They do everything right, even when no one's looking. They import all of their high quality coffee beans directly from Colombia and Brazil and Uganda and Honduras and Peru and Ethiopia and Indonesia and other far off lands. Some of their coffees are available in K-Cups. Uh, they have gift cards available if you have any birthdays coming up and you get free shipping over $50. Uh, they also have subscribe and save services. If you do find that one coffee that is your favorite, you can make sure to never run out with a subscribe and save service. Uh, if you like flavored coffees, they have the mom's carrot cake, the intense blueberry and the mint chocolate chip. There's also the unicorn and you never know what's in the unicorn. You just, you just never know. It'll never be the same thing twice. Probably. Uh, I, probably. I don't know. It'll never be the same thing twice. And, uh, it's, I, I got it once and I still don't know what it was, but I know I liked it. Uh, they also have a ton of non-flavored coffees, uh, the fierce, the rage against the dying of the light, the ride or die, the cast iron, the Odin, they have the Rocco, which is available in both medium and dark. Uh, there's the Thor, the Loki, the drink from the skull of your enemy, the fear, no evil, the integrity and the. Nope, I don't know why I said and. That was the last one. But they have all of that and more at the... I, not not and more. That, that was all of them. Uh, ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian is proud sponsor of the Sloopcast and is located in Cary, Ohio. Suburb of Finley in good old Northwest Ohio. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about some of the seasonings over in his beef seasoning section of uh, the old fashioned here, Jared. The old fashioned, probably his most interesting spice. Um, it it's, is. Worked on, it's worked on the mimic of the classic drink, and they think that they've nailed it. Sweet, bourbony, and just the right kick of bitter. Want something more spicy? Look no further than the Four Horsemen. Um, and he says here, and a voice said, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse. <laughs> and its name that said on him was death and hell followed with him. That is exactly this seasoning for different hot pepper blend. But don't worry, you won't just sweat it. You'll enjoy it. 
with a heat that lingers, but a flavor that keeps you grabbing more. Or you can go with the Cajun. Cajun is a great blend of uh, spices that will add the extra something to your week at week night meals. Give your food that New Orleans treatment with the Cajun. Great on chicken, fish, steaks, and pork. Or you can go with a, a seasoning can't go wrong with, and that is his smoked. It is um, it's a smoky, great taste without having to spend all day around that barbecue pit. Blended with smoked paprika, the seasoning will add that great barbecue taste to your food, no matter where you're cooking it. You know what? You know what, Mad Canadian? You're just making me so hungry reading <laughs> the, all of these seasonings here. These just sound so, so good here. Check them all out over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. And again, that is the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to use that promo code SloopCast10, SloopCast10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. 